Everybody wants to boycott when it's beneficial to them. You have rappers who name themselves after dictators, after drug dealers, who, in a sense, these people destroyed families and lives too. And letting us sit at the table, boss. I always beg the question, why is there no outrage or boycotts of slave movies? Let your brother do something to you. You're going to drag him through the mud. Everybody on Facebook going to know. Netflix has been on the ropes these past couple years trying to survive these streaming wars. Most people like myself have been one foot in, one foot out when it comes to keeping or dropping our Netflix subscriptions. I mean, with the recent price increase and the rumors that they're about to insert ads and they want to remove the whole binging system that they kind of created. Can you blame someone for wanting to take their money and their wasted time elsewhere? But somehow Netflix continues to bring us in when they drop certain bangers. With the recent influx of foreign movies, series, and docs being added to their roster, I myself kind of find it hard to pull myself out of this chokehold that Netflix has on me. In case you've been living under a rock, Netflix has just dropped the Jeffrey Dahmer series. It's called Dahmer. Now, when it comes to Jeffrey Dahmer, I was a young buck when he was out here raising hell. So I really don't know the story. It happened like late 80s, early 90s. Like by the time he was dead, I think I was like in the fourth grade or some shit. So I really don't know the full story. But nonetheless, I love me a good murder mystery doc. Fun fact, on a road trip back from New Orleans once, I listened to uh, Forensic Files on Sirius XM Satellite Radio. That was my thing for a while. A good friend of mine and a media associate uh, told me that this obsession with murder mysteries has an actual name. This obsession is called yeah, it's a real thing. Now, I'm not intrigued enough to go ahead and do a lot of the shit that these crazy motherfucking serial killers be doing. I watch these type of shows or movies and my lazy ass immediately goes to how the hell are you cleaning this mess up? I mean, the way that they describe it, you know, blood flying all over the place. Dead weight is heavy as fuck. So you mean to tell me I'm going to kill somebody, drag the body and clean up this entire mess? Nah. And I don't even like drunk sex. So like I'm not into like lifeless, like taking advantage of people. Like that's not cool. Like I'm not into that. So you motherfuckers are very sick. I said all that to say just because I like murder mystery doesn't mean that I'm going to go out here and murder somebody and create a mystery. The families of the victims is claiming that Netflix in a sense is trying to humanize Dahmer and you know, it's not cool. And also the family members of the victims didn't get paid. Let's unpack this. The getting paid part, that's what stuck out the most to me. And I'm gonna tell you why. Something tells me that if they would have got a bag from Netflix for using their family's likeness, they probably would not have had this type of outrage. Because if something is triggering to you and your people, I don't think there's any amount of money that can actually soften that blow. I also call bullshit because we're slowly entering a world where everything offends everybody and it's fucking sickening. Everybody wants people to boycott something when it's beneficial to them and their plight. What I mean by that is there are tons of other things in the world where that we should be boycotting as a people. Uh, certain companies, corporations, based off of systematic racism, based off of historical racism. There are tons of things where we should be like actually putting our time and energy towards but we don't. So I always beg the question, why is there no outrage or boycott of slave movies? For a lot of us who know our history or where it begins in America, you're probably tied into slavery. So a slave movie in a sense is generational trauma. That should be fucking triggering. I don't know about y'all, but when I do see them, they do make me uncomfortable. But there's no outrage for that because that is part of American history. And while we want people to learn and understand that part of American history, we can't be selective about which pieces of American history we let into the history book. If you're gonna have one, gotta have it all. It's not that I don't like slave movies. I mean, I don't like any sort of movie where they depict black people in a bad light. They make us be pimps or drug addicts, drug dealers. I feel like there's more to it than that. And a lot of those stories, whether they're fictional or true, they're based off some sort of reality. I love a good drug kingpin movie. Do my shit. Narcos, like, you know, everybody knows the history of Pablo Escobar, the Medellin cartel, the Cali cartel, like all of that. Like, we know that. These are freaking story shit. Motherfuckers want to be named after some of these people. You have rappers who name themselves after dictators, after drug dealers, who, in a sense, these people destroyed families and lives too. Let's not forget that. And 
I'm not dumb. I know I'm not the only black male that was born in the 80s whose family was affected by the crack or the heroin epidemic. Th those two, those two drugs ravaged the black and brown community. But it's only a epidemic now because little Johnny and Sally got hooked on the Oxycontin and now they're doing dog food at the high school. Reality sucks. But my point is we don't scream outrage when it comes to the paid in fools, the narcos, cocaine cowboys, American gangsters, New Jack cities, Scarfaces. You get where I'm going? Like we, there's never outrage to any of those movies. But we we clap it up when Cameron uh, played the hell out of Alpo and paid in full. Even though Alpo was a fucking villain, there was no outrage for the family of you know, the porters who, you know, Alpo killed Rich, if you know the movie. Where's the outrage? Trauma, triggers. That was based on the true story. Now, even though they changed the name, doesn't matter. But we all watch them as a family and we consciously don't even care about who else is getting triggered if the movie is good. Ever since the uh, arrival of the word trigger, triggering, being associated with PTSD and mental health in the black community that came, it has been one of those where it's like, in a sense, kind of a bittersweet moment. I just think we're dragging this word into the ground. Everything's triggering. Everything's like bothering people. And I got PTSD from this. What I really think is sad though, is how people can't see the nuances in these movies, series, or docs when it comes to certain shit that has happened in American history. Two things can always be true. This fucker Jeffrey Dahmer was a sick fuck. That's a fact, that's the first fact. And the people who did this series, they did a great fucking job at it. I'm not talking about them trying to humanize it, I'm just saying the detail, even as far as some of the like video texture, like they did such a good job, like I could tell that apartment stink without even having to smell the stink that came from that apartment, like he just looked dirty. Like they did a great job in the way that they portrayed the movie. And I don't care what none of y'all say because we as black people are some of the most forgiving people on this planet. Like we forgive everybody who has done something wrong to us, but our own kind. Let somebody else do something to you. We supposed to pray, you know, pray for them, forgive them, do all of that good stuff. But as soon as it's somebody of your own kind, we got to get our lick back. That don't sit right with me. Take for instance, one Robert Kelly. Now, this motherfucker is a sick and twisted individual. What R. Kelly did, you can't even forgive for. You shouldn't forgive. And no one should forget it, right? He should be buried under the jail. But at the same time, he did give great music. And at one time, we all celebrated R. Kelly's music. Shit, when I graduated eighth grade, we graduated to I Believe I Can Fly. The reason I bring that up is because today you can't listen to the man's music without being judged or looked at because they're, it, they look at it like you're supporting what he did. But let's not act like historically these songs haven't put us as a people in a certain environment. So you mean to tell us that we have to leave that in the past and act like none of that happened, even if our lives turned out great or if they turned out shitty. Walt Disney was an alleged racist and an anti-Semite. I've even seen some of those cartoons. And I don't know if they're dockered up or not, but they have the cartoons where before there was blackface, they were drawn black people in a certain light. They exaggerated our lips. They exaggerated our ears, our eyes. Eyes, I know they exaggerated us in these cartoons in the sense that it wasn't a good look. And Walt Disney, you were the leader of that shit. But nobody's canceling their Disney Plus subscriptions. In fact, they're about to come out with The Little Mermaid, but in black. And all the black people are supposed to be ecstatic about this because this is representation. This is inclusion. This is what it looks like. I guess since we got to sit at the table, boss, let's be happy about that. Let's celebrate this because this is inclusion. This is what representation looks like. So what I'm saying is this, if a guy starts a company, but this guy does some nasty, atrocious things, does his company have to fail after he's longer gone? If his company has done other things, if his company is giving you a seat at their table, whether it's the kid's table or not, same thing goes with the person who created the music. You separate the art from the artist. This guy did some atrocious things and no, he should not be celebrated in any way, shape or form. But a lot of things happened or came from said songs, said actions. All I'm saying is if we can sit here and get the Little Mermaid in black and we're supposed to go out and watch this as a family, I still think we should be able to play I Believe I Could Fly, Step in the Name of Love. I'm not talking about the negative stuff. I'm not talking about the ones that are questionable. So when I see people like Lil Boosie screaming for black folks to not watch Don because he was a serial killer that killed young black men and did 
atrocious things to their body and organs. Shit was wicked. Yo, he was like, he was literally eating niggas. Like, if you told him to eat a dick, he like took that shit personally. He did. Like, he had somebody's dick in this. Y'all gotta watch the shit. If if you're into crime and murder mystery like I am. All I gotta say though to to Boosie, respectfully Boosie, because I respect Boosie with the utmost. He's not afraid to speak his mind, but I'm calling bullshit because how are we okay with being portrayed as slaves, pimps, deadbeats, drug dealers, all of these negative things. We all love BMF and that's a true story. And what those brothers did, they changed a lot of lives, but they also ruined a lot of lives. And I'm not saying that we should disown them. No, what I'm saying is that is all part of American history. If we're going to celebrate one piece of history, we got to celebrate all pieces of history. Don't try to hide it, point blank period. Because now what you're doing is by creating outrage for this, you're opening the door for, for people to actually say, hey, you know what, with this critical race theory, I'm offended and triggered by it. You're opening a can of worms that I don't think is going to be nice for us on the other side of it. I'm sure y'all are gonna curse me out for my takes on this and try to say that I'm all sorts of anti-black or I'm not this, I'm not that. But you're still gonna go and give Disney your money. Even though Walt Disney himself isn't gonna get the money in his pocket, his family's gonna get it. This whole generational wealth that we all talk about, like this is the trickle down effect. So judge me, but watch where you freaking step. The difference between me and y'all is I don't sit on a pedestal and judge. I actually enjoy learning about the American history, the good, the bad, the ugly. I will read it, watch it, listen to it because I want to understand what is going on. Like, how did we get to where we are? How did things happen the way that they are? Because there's an old adage that says those who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. And a lot of things are repetition in this world. So once you will start understanding that, you'll start understanding where you're going and then you can understand where we're all headed, which might be hell, but still. <laughs> Rinse with ant damn it, rinse with ant damn it.